is PayPal undervalued today? PayPal stock has certainly had its ups and downs from an all-time high over $300 to lows in the last year, damn near $50. What does it all mean? Well, I think anybody that paid $300 for PayPal stock grossly overpaid, and that was a clown valuation. But I think the stock now around current levels near call it 60 ish dollars, it starts to make a whole lot more sense compared to the amount of cash flow that they produce. In fact, some even say that it's outright cheap here, maybe one of the better deals in the market, especially in the payment space. We'll dive a little bit into the financials and see what kind of deal this actually is. Critics or bears would have you believe that this is a dying business. So the revenue is not necessarily growing at a breakneck pace like it used to, but they grew substantially during the pandemic and never actually retraced on an annual basis and have continued to grow at upper single digits from there. So I actually think what PayPal's done in terms of growth on the top line is pretty impressive and certainly not a dying business. Is it growing at 30% every year, like a Palantir or something? No, but it is still growing that top line and it certainly isn't quote unquote dying. But the next point that they like to make is that it's a race to the bottom. They point to the decrease in the gross margins. And on the surface, I think that holds some water. Definitely compressed compressed margins would maybe indicate, hey, maybe they're being pressed by competition. They're having to compete more and more on price. However, some of it may be that growth in the top line is in business segments that have lower gross margins, which slowly drops the overall gross margins of the business. The new CEO that just got installed, I think it was just near the end of last year, he seems like his idea is that they can probably grow these margins in the future and that they can grow their operating margins by perhaps increasing efficiencies and synergies between business segments. So I'm not overly concerned. And it does seem that this has sort of stabilized around this 39-ish percent area for gross margins. Now, if it took a sudden dramatic turn downward or just started dropping little by little every quarter, that would be something to look at. Now, certainly if it got down to like 35 and was still dropping, then I'm going to have to start questioning the narrative from management pretty thoroughly. In terms of risk investing in PayPal, they are a cash rich business. Their balance sheet is quite healthy. Uh, they used to have a lot more net cash on the balance sheet, but there, there has been, they have, I think, added some debt or they did at least a couple years ago, you know, when interest rates were so low, it made sense to do that because it was cheap money, but it does look like they've been building up back up their cash reserves. And now they've gotten back to the point where their net cash is over two and a half billion dollars. So after paying off all of their long-term debt, they would still have $2.6 billion remaining in the bank. And it looks like lately that that's just been on the up and up, like they've been growing it while also uh, doing a lot of buybacks, I might add. So this could be a case where they're slowly building up a really, really powerful compounding machine. The buyback yield on PayPal is over 5%. So I know a lot of people love their dividends, but a buyback is basically just a more tax efficient dividend as a certain way of thinking about it, because what they're doing is they're reducing the amount of shares outstanding. They're basically 
it's like if you had a small business and you had say three partners and two partners decided to buy out the third one well all of a sudden all the distributions that were going to that third partner or any assets the business build up and whatnot over the next following years those all go to the remaining two partners instead and by buying back shares they're basically doing the same thing and the tax rate for share buybacks is only i think one percent versus the tax rate for dividends so they're providing effectively a yield above five percent at a much better value uh, tax wise for shareholders especially the ones that aren't in tax advantaged accounts so i actually really like that they're doing buybacks especially when we consider their valuation metrics so this company trades at a pretty undemanding 14 and a half price to earnings with a price to free cash flow of only 12 and a price to operating cash flow slightly under 11. now if you remember i was buying amazon very recently at a price to operating cash flow near enough about 19 to 20 somewhere in that range and granted there's a bigger difference in a in an amazon between the price to operating cash flow and the price to free cash flow but paypal is a good example of a business that doesn't have much capex at least as a in terms of a percentage of their uh, overall revenue and you can see how closely their free cash flow and operating cash flow align with each other they're not there's not like a huge difference between the two um and now their pe it looks like the, maybe the net income is a little bit lower than the free cash flow but that's fine i'll take the cash instead of the gap accounting income every day of the week um and i guess they do have pretty high stock-based compensation so that's probably counting against the net income a bit there however they have stated that they want to get that somewhat reduced so that'll be even better for the bottom line for the shareholders unsurprisingly analysts are a sort of weak buy rating on this they're not an enthusiastic or a strong buy with the high side being 90 compared to today's around 60 with the low side mirroring today's price so the analysts at least agree that it's either about accurate today or slightly undervalued up to maybe 50 percent um upside on it now my own personal take here is that while this is pretty conservative it's also a little bit more realistic valuation wise than a lot of other analysts forecasts i've seen and i do think to get a 50 percent gain in 12 months sentiment really would need to turn around on this stock i think this stock burned a lot of investors that were super enthusiastic during the pandemic and a lot of those people if they aren't out yet they want to get out on any kind of surge in the share price which will probably create some kind of overhang on it and or ones who already got out and took their loss they're not in any hurry to get back in so i think there is po probably a smaller pool of people willing to buy this name just because of how many people got burned on the big crash down but if you pay $300 for PayPal, you do deserve what you got. It was a bad decision. Learn from it and move on. Now, for my own part, this is not my actual assessment of what the future of PayPal will look like, but it is what this model says PayPal would need to do to justify around a $60 price, which is close to the level they're trading at today my cost basis is like 59 so this applies to me as well what will it take for me to you know get an average of 10 percent return per year over the long run in this stock well first of all we would have to take the trailing free cash flow and we would have to grow it by an average of three and a half percent to down to three percent slowly decreasing over time and i mean this 
barely like this this matches to barely beats inflation levels as far as increasing free cash flow i think all they really have to do is slightly increase efficiency and operating cash flow plus hold the line um to at some level on their gross margins while continuing to increase revenue and this is going to be more than achieved in all likelihood my opinion take for it what you will some people disagree with me and they think it's a race to the bottom and that cash app and apple pay and google pay are going to just absolutely demolish them <clears throat> but that is not i think what we're actually seeing in the data but i digress some people say it's obvious on the face of it those people are welcome to not buy paypal i have 100 shares hopefully i'm right and myself and my fellow shareholders will benefit be sure to comment below if you have paypal or what you think the fair value is today i definitely think it's reasonable at today's price if not a little bit even more than today's price as always feel free to give it a like for the algorithm subscribe to the channel for more and help me grow my audience also join the discord link in the description most importantly i need to grow my audience on x slash twitter and i need you to follow me at mr macho mog investing in manliness those are what i focus on on there make sure also that you follow me every saturday 8 p.m eastern cash flow kings live link in the description and consider becoming a member if you want to support directly